Okay, so we want to create a milling fixture. This is a chick one lock product. So this is the way that it comes in from the step file that uh, they provide on their website. So if you want to follow along, uh, we'll go to the website here really quick. Uh, this is their website here, chickworkholding.com. These are products available in North America, but if you are in Europe and watching this, there are, the, all the steps are going to be very similar, so feel free to follow along with a similar product. But uh, for here, uh, you can download the different uh, one-lock vices. I'm actually using the 1550, the 1550 model right here. Uh, so you can download the step format here and the PDF uh, instructions on, uh, you know, the data, I guess, for this particular product there. So let's go back to Esprit. So here we see the full assembly and Chick, it looks like they colorized the model. So this is nice. I mean, this looks really great. We don't have to do any colorization of the model, so uh, they're definitely putting some nice models out there. So uh, what we have here is a single jaw vise where uh, this jaw is going to slide back and forth and this jaw here is going to be fixed to the base. So the first thing that we want to do like any of these products is we want to orient and position our assembly or model in the correct you know location and orientation so this typically sits you know on a uh, machine table and it looks like it's kind of hard to see here uh, because this is pretty dark so what i'm going to do really quick is just maybe change the color of all this so i see here that if i pick this solid i'm actually picking everything here and, you know, I like the way all this looks. I just want to change this dark black to something a little bit lighter, make it a little bit easier to see. So what we can do is come down here to our uh, propagation filter. And when I click on that, uh, if we look at the face icons, you have all of these different choices. So you can choose one of these color, uh, one of these coloring choices here. This is you know, just different types are of standards of color selection. So I'm going to pick that first one. I'm going to hold shift on my keyboard and I'm going to pick uh, this face here. Not the whole solid, but the face. So when I pick the face and I left click here, you'll see that that uh, color selection indeed worked. So if I go to clear here, you'll see that the selection is only of the faces that are that dark color. I'm gonna right click, go to copy, and here I'll pick black, but I'm gonna define custom color and go up to around 80 like I normally do uh, when I'm creating uh, the darker anodization. So now that I come back to the shaded view, we can see it's a little trick there that if uh, you do get a model that comes in with a color that is maybe not desirable, you can quickly select all of the faces that uh, have that same color attribute and it makes it very easy to grab all of these faces around. So now we can see, um, you know, for me, I can see here that we have these two locations on uh, for this uh, for this one lock vice. So what we're going to want to do first is move our origin point because this is likely going to be uh, sitting on some sort of a base plate that has specific locations that maybe we created in the past, or maybe you're going to create a custom base plate fixture that this would attach to. So we want to reference one of these two points. So what I'm going to do here is come to manipulation and say move origin. And this will snap a new uh, zero point, a new XY zero point. And you can see that as I move, move my mouse, to the center location of one of these, it highlights that I'm gonna click, and then we see that our XYZ home location, our P0, our origin point in Esprit has moved to that location. 
So now uh, this has been positioned now to be where I want it. And now we want to make sure that it's oriented correctly. So for a component like this, we want to, you know, we're going to use this. We might use it in different methods on the machine, but typically, you know, most people are going to have a vertical mill. They're going to use this with a vertical mill. That's what this is designed for, or maybe horizontal. But uh, basically, uh, for each of those, it's going to be the same. So if you're standing in front of a vertical mill, you're going to be basically looking at it kind of like this, where, you know, you're going to have this at the, the door facing the operator so that they can uh, tighten down the workpiece. So the X and the Y you know, this is correct. So they've already oriented this in the correct method. So looking at this from a top view, looking down from the, the ceiling down to the machine, the table X is typically in this direction. The Y is this direction. Of course, the Z is going to go up into the spindle. So we don't really need to do anything there either. But this is the way if your model did not come in this orientation, you want to make sure uh, before we continue to get it into this orientation. So now, um, we can choose what we want to do here. Unfortunately, they do not, it doesn't seem like I, I didn't find the hard jaws. So if we look at the uh, PDF uh, manual, the data information for this, let me drag this over to the screen here. If we look at this, we can see that there are, you know, multiple different jaw types. So I personally do not have any of these, but if you can get them from your sales rep, you know, we'll talk a little bit about how to, to do that. So, but this document is good. You want to grab the PDF because it's going to show you, you know, here is our, um, you know, maximum nine inch, uh, 228.5, um, you know, jaw opening from face to face of the soft jaws. So we're going to reference this document in a little bit, but um, we want to look at the individual solids and see what we have. So that's a solid. This is a solid here. So both of these are going to move in tandem together. And what we want to do here for this particular example is I'm going to, you know, we want to decide how we want to, to use this. So with the soft jaws, I want to create, I'm going to create, I think, three different Esprit files. So we're going to have one that will be this solid that contains the fixed jaw base with the base itself. Then we'll create another one of this guy. And then we'll create another one with these. So the first thing that I think for me to organize everything, I'm going to put everything on a separate layer. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to say, add a new layer. We'll call this uh, base. I'll create a new layer. We'll call this uh, fixed soft jaw. And then we'll do another one here, movable. <clears throat> movable jaw. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to grab with the control key, I'm going to select and highlight these two items. And then in the properties, I'm going to go ahead and set that to be on that layer that I just created. So for the default layer, we want to go to the movable jaw. And now I know that those are on that layer. Now on this, I'm going to grab this and I'm going to switch this from default to the fixed soft jaw. And then this one I'm going to put on the base. So now I should be able to control and I see we've got a couple of little things here. So what I'll do is I'll highlight that and this likely is going to be on the base. So I'll set that to the base as well. So now when I turn the base on, yeah, that's there. There's my soft jaw and my movable jaw is there. Now, typically, uh, you know, if, if you were creating this, 
in the Esprit interface and you did not have access to Machine Tool Builder, um, you would want to position these jaws in the, uh, I guess, the maximum open distance because when you save out a GDML from the Esprit interface, it assumes that the location of everything is at the open position. So we're going to go ahead and verify that, that the uh, distance between these two, and we can come here to analysis, or we can go to measure. So we're going to say element one will be this face, element two will be this face, and it says that it's 8.996. And if we recall from the PDF document, it said it was, I believe, nine inches. And so 8.996, that's close enough. We're just going to go ahead and leave that alone. So this is the maximum open distance that the uh, jaws are you know, set to right now. So the next thing we want to do here is we're going to want to create our uh, workpiece adapter, any subsequent fixture adapter. We should at least have one on here and uh, our jaw adapter. So that's a WA for workpiece adapter, a FA for fixture adapter, and JA for jaw adapter. Now to keep things simple, uh, this jaw is going to be moving along the y-axis, and we're going to leave everything the way that it is right now. I think this would be the most, um, you know, the easiest way to do this. So. I'm going to leave, the for the jaw adapter, I'm going to leave this location where it is at 0, 0, 0. So we're just going to come here and say JA underscore 1, okay? And that's it. Uh, now, the other one that we want to do here is we want to put a uh, fixture adapter and a workpiece adapter. So we're going to come to manipulation, say modify and we're gonna grab the z-axis. And when I do that, you'll see that no matter where I move my mouse, my z-axis stays inside the z-axis plane or you know this, this direction. We're just moving it straight up and down. It's not changing the x and y location at all. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pick uh, something along the, the top of, you know, one of the soft jaws or the vice, whatever, and that will put that right at, you know, the top here. So what I like when I'm typically using these types of fixtures is I wind up translating my workpiece up so I can usually digitize the bottom face of it to align it with maybe the top of a, a cutout on the jaw. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to hit that W again, and we're going to give it a distance of, say, 2.5 inches. If you're working in metric, you know, you could put in, uh, you know, 60, 70 millimeters. I'm going to place that up there. And then, you know, what do we want to do with this? I'm just going to grab that, the, uh, the, the V for a long Y. And, you know, you could pick something here along the middle just so that, you know, the workpiece is kind of aligned in the middle of where your jaws would be. So right here, I'm going to say this is my new uh, workpiece adapter, WA underscore one. Now for the fixture adapter, uh, what do you want to do? Uh, if you were going to basically fixture onto another fixture, where would you place it? You know, um, you know, whether you're going to do this or not, uh, I just like to create it anyway. So what I'm going to do is come back to the, the manipulation modify work plane again. We're going to grab our W. And what I'll do is I'll grab something on the bottom of the jaw, like right here. So that's going to put my fixture adapter, you know, right there. Uh, if you want to, you know, center this, you can certainly center it. Uh, so we can come here and you know basically say let's grab the u and find the midpoint here and then we can say let's create an fa underscore one 
And then if you want to even double click the workpiece adapter and do the same thing by modifying you and snapping to the middle of the jaw, just so that it's sitting, you know, in that mid position, uh, we can come here and for the workpiece adapter, just right click on it. And we're going to say replace the plane. So we have those created, but we have one more that we want to create because we're going to save this out as a fixed jaw. And to save this out as a fixed jaw, we're going to save it out not as a jaw type GDML, but just as a fixture GDML. So we want to have another fixture uh, uh, position set for this. So what we're going to do is go back to XYZ and we're going to leave this where it is just like I did with this jaw for the JA. We're going to leave this where it is. And when, I, when I'm set at XYZ, I want to come here and I want to create a new position. We're going to call this a uh, fixture adapter underscore fixed jaw. And that way when I'm in the TNG environment and I load my GDML for that fixture jaw, I will see that I will see this nomenclature in the interface when I'm using it. So at this point, we've created all of the uh, adapter positions that we need to create everything as a, a working assembly. So let's save our file now. We're going to go ahead and just do a file save as. And go ahead and put this wherever you are saving your files. So we'll call this chick one lock um, s. Oh, sorry, that's five O L one five five zero C M. So this we have basically achieved kind of a base level for what we want to do. Um, you can leave this as a single Esprit file, uh, which may, may be better. Let's go ahead and do that. Uh, what we'll do is show you how to use the grouping to save the individual uh, GDML. So we'll leave this as a single Esprit file. That way we can always have it as a reference. So the first thing that I'm going to do is save my base unit out as my fixture GDML. So what I want to do is I want to come here and I want to turn off my movable jaw and my fixed jaw. And then I'm going to highlight everything. Okay, you can highlight everything by, by clicking and dragging over the entire solid. Because remember we had a couple of little guys over here that were part of the assembly. Now you can also hit Control A on your keyboard or right click and say select all. That will do the same thing or just click and drag. And now we'll come to file, save as, and in that folder we're going to pick a fixture file GDML type. Okay, so we're going to say this is just basically the same name. Okay, you can, I mean, you know, if you wanted to, we can put underscore base unit or something. So we'll put the base there. And that's saved out. So we've got this, and we don't really need it anymore. But again, because we want to kind of leave it as an assembly, we're just going to come back and turn on one of these others and leave that one off. So now we're going to go ahead and save this one out. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to just highlight and come to File, Save As. And here we're going to pick same thing, Fixture File. This is very important. This is not a moving uh, jaw or anything. This is another Fixture File. We're referencing a Fixture Adapter Position, FA underscore Fixed Jaw. So here we're going to, uh, what do we want to call this? We'll kind of leave this alone and maybe we'll just do underscore fixed jaw. And for this, you know, you might want to just say a blank or something. 
you know, because we haven't actually cut extrude our part, part profile or anything from that. So I'm just going to leave it as blank. So we have that. And then uh, we want to basically do the same thing for the movable jaw. Okay. So we're going to take this jaw, we're going to highlight this jaw, come to File, Save As, and we're going to do the same thing, except this time we're picking a jaw file. This is a jaw file, GDML, very important. And we're going to say moving jaw. And now we have these three items saved already. OK, so the next step is starting Machine Tool Builder. And this is the interface. And then browse to where you saved out your GDMLs. And then you can just double click your base file or you know come to file and open and browse to where your base file is and it comes in and this is what it looks like so you've got your uh, you know your view here is set to be from the top view so what we're gonna do is rotate that you can left click to rotate inside machine tool builder so hold your left mouse button and that allows you to rotate. If you hold your left and right mouse button together, that allows you to pan, and then the wheel on the mouse will allow you to zoom in and zoom out. So rotate to a view that you like. We can come here to view and say set preview, and that is going to now show this view anytime we're in TNG and we want to load this. It will show us the base unit looking in this uh, orientation graphically. So I'm not going to go through all of the settings in Machine Tool Builder. We're going to get to the point where we can use this. There's really only one thing you need to change here. And that is if you uh, expand all of these things here, uh, you can see underneath the yellow JA1 that we created, we have an orange JA1 with a direction arrow. This is a jaw axis with actual axis values. So here, the main thing that we were, we were concerned with is the axis direction. This is set to 100. What does that mean? X of, you know, a vector direction of 1 along x and 0, 0 means that the jaw will slide along the x-axis. And we don't want that. We want it to move along y and y only. So we want to say 0, comma, 1, comma, 0 and hit enter. Now, best practice, if you recall, it was 9 inches of movement for that jaw. I think it was 228.5 millimeters. So here in, in Machine Tool Builder, everything is, is metric. So the lower limit here, just for best practices, we don't have to change this because it's already greater than the value and the jaw will stop. But I'm just going to set this to 228.5. Okay. And then I'm going to come to the yellow and I'm going to do the same thing here, minus 228.5 and hit enter. So that is a uh, pretty much it and you know if I you know if you just kind of want to see this moving you can see that this is our home position where the jaw is actually going to be sitting here and as we move that jaw that that movable jaw will slide toward the fixed jaw those nine inches so we're pretty much done I'm just going to say file save and then we're going to come down and I'm going to hit my TNG icon again. This brings up an error or a notification, I should say, that says this spree is already running. But you can start two TNGs. You could have two documents open at the same time. So we're just going to set this up really quick to show you at this point how you can use your new uh, setup uh, fixture. I'm going to double click default inch for me uh, if you are in Europe and you're using metric. Uh, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to do this quickly. Geometry, I'm going to say polygon. I'm going to say diameter of three, number of sides, four. I'm going to say apply. And then we're going to say exit. 
I'm going to hold my shift key down. I'm going to group those four elements together, come to modeling, come to extrude. I'm going to say OK, rotate, zoom in a little bit, come to home, part setup. I'm going to double click the part. I'm going to double click the solid. I'm going to say OK. Then I'm going to say stock from block. I'm just going to say OK twice. I'm going to come to machine setup. I will come down to samples. I will come to mill, three axis mill, medium mill. You probably have a mill if you are doing this tutorial. So you can load your own mill or you can load the sample medium mill. I'm going to come to, let's add a fixture. I'm going to go back to my data folder, OEM solids, where I have temporary. As I'm working with things, I'm going to pick that base unit. And you can see here that this is the orientation that we saved it out as. I'm going to say OK. Uh, this was a 9-inch movement of that jaw. So this looks like something like 6 to 10 inches. I'm going to put minus 8 inches. That looks pretty good. I'm going to say OK. Now on the, the vise, I'm going to say add a new fixture. And I'm going to pick my fixed jaw fixture. OK, remember this one. We're going to say OK, and I see that it's it's default opening up where I created my fixture adapter. I don't want that, so I want to put it on my fixed jaw position, and there we go. So now I say OK, and now we want to highlight the vise again, the vise base, and add a jaw. And here we can pick the moving jaw, and you see here, here's our moving jaw. I'm going to say OK. And there's only one moving jaw definition that we created, so it uh, appears on that. And now when we click the open closed, we've got that moving correctly. I'm going to say OK. And there it is. OK, so now what we want to do is we just want to use this with our workpiece and see how that works. So we'll come to the machine setup again. And on the vise, we want to add a workpiece. And when we do that, the workpiece defaults to our workpiece adapter position. So what we could use is our mating commands. I'm going to rotate. Again, remember, I wanted this to be a little bit higher, and this is why. I'm going to pick this bottom face, holding control down on my keyboard. I'm going to pick the top face of the jaw, and then I'm going to hit mate. And that automatically snaps the part to the height of the top of the jaw. So here it's minus two and a half. I'll just change this to minus uh, 2.75. That brings it down about 250 thousandths. Okay. And now what we can do is pick this face and rotate and pick this face. Again, holding control on the keyboard down. I'm going to hit the mating and say OK. And now when I close, this would be very representative of the actual setup that I would have on my mill, now again, we save these out separately. So you can go into your original file. Uh, oops, I accidentally hit the wrong one. I want to go back to my original file here. So this is the assembly that we, you know, the CAD assembly. So you can save this out after you've done your extrusion here for whatever part profile you wanted to put. Um, but inside of the spree, if you don't extrude them, you know, your jaw is just going to be sitting a little bit further out, unless the part is so big that you need to extrude these to get it in between the jaws. Okay, so we're going to actually create some custom soft jaws really quick, just to make sure everybody knows how to do it and what I'm talking about. I'm going to go to modify work plane and just kind of bring my work plane up. And I'm going to pick one of these top values so my work plane is at the top there. Then I will go to a top view. And I'm going to do this crudely. You know, it's not going to be super precise. But I'm just going to draw two rectangles like this and like this that will um, I'll be able to extrude and cut away. So now what I'm going to do is holding my shift key down, I'm going to pick one of the profiles and then I'm going to come to Modeling, Extrude, and then we will set this to, say, 200 thousandths, and we're going to go ahead and set this to, um, actually, so if you're 
concern that maybe your geometry isn't exactly at the top of your jaw, you can set this from blind to mid-plane. And if you were on blind, you would want to set this to reverse to be on the bottom. But I'm just going to say mid-plane, and that gets me both sides just to make it good. So I'm going to pick my soft jaw, and I'm going to cut and say yes. Okay, see what we're doing here? Now I'm going to do this one, and I'm going to do the exact same thing. So we're going to do mid-plane, active solid is going to be this soft jaw. I'm going to say OK. And we have those. Now uh, I want to resave my jaws. So what I'm going to do is, you know, using the select key, I'm going to pick the jaws, uh, the solids, sorry, for the movable jaw. And for this movable jaw here, um, we're going to go ahead and just say file save as and you know before I do this I should mention this um, you don't have to have any of these anymore these are unnecessary um, when you're doing these so you, you don't need to have them but uh, just for simplistic purposes you can leave them in it's not going to harm anything but um, when you're saving for a jaw for this, you can, you know, delete these if you want. I'm going to leave them there um, because that was the simple way of doing this. So here we're just going to save this out and say file, save as, and then I will come to jaw file because this is the movable jaw. And here I'll say the moving jaw, uh, we'll say underscore, uh, 0200 or something as like some just some nomenclature that I can remember in my head of what I'm doing or maybe a job number and then over here I'm gonna pick this one now remember this one we're not going to use a jaw type we're gonna pick a fixture and we'll pick the fixed jaw just so I have this and not blank but we'll put the job number underscore 0200 now we can switch over to the other uh, Esprit instance and we can utilize that here. So now under the machine setup, we can come over and on the vise, when I add my workpiece, what we're going to do is I'm going to come to the jaw and I'm going to edit the jaw and say instead of the moving jaw, we're going to do the moving jaw 0200, and you can see we now have that one. I'm going to say OK, and then for this fixed jaw, we'll double click and edit that, and we're going to pick uh, the 0200 fixed jaw, and we have that cut out now. So I think you're getting where I'm going here. Now for the workpiece, when I edit the workpiece, what I can do is pick this top face and uh, pick this bottom face of the part and say mate and then what I'll do is I'll pick this face this one here on the side and then I'll pick this interior wall face here and say mate and now when I say okay and hit that we see that my stock is sitting on that shelf held by the vise exactly the way that I would want it so that is how to create a milling fixture, a single jaw milling fixture using Esprit and TNG to make your digital twin look more representative of the actual uh, physical setup that you have on the machine for collision checking. So let us know if you have any questions or requests for videos. Hopefully this helps you make more accurate programs with Esprit and send more confident code to the shop floor.